And like, you know, I, everything, my whole life is kickboxing. I wake up kickboxing. I eat kickboxing. I sleep kickboxing. I even walk the dog kickboxing. Uh, I'm walking. I feel that I've got the speed and movement to upset his rhythm. And then I'll capitalize on that. Then I'll, I'll get into my rhythm and push him back. Not trying to be cocky or anything, but I just feel like I'm the better fighter in every department. Or going into their back garden, beat them at their own game, come home with the belt. We're going to shock the world now in three weeks. The same thing I think every single fight. Aim, seek and destroy. Do you think your power is going to be a factor against Kazim? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so so you, you're, you're not going to be that man to hurt me. No chance. We'll see you now in three weeks. We will, we will. Stand. You stand in front of me and roll with me. You're going to get knocked out. Seriously, you are going to get knocked out. Are you a bigger hitter than me? Yeah. I, You're I, a bigger hit than me. Myself bigger hit than you, yeah. You, you stand in front of me, you will get knocked out. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Like, as in, like, he could say, he could talk to talk, he could talk, talk a load of bollocks, whatever he wants to say. But at the end of the day, he's going to have to meet me in the middle of that ring and prove it. I feel like I'm better than Liam in every department. And I just don't think Kaz can keep up with that face. I don't think he'll be able to keep up with my pressure. And I promise you, he will not be able to walk forward for 12 rounds. Yeah, what we're going to see on the night, how's it going to unfold on the night? It's going it's to be a beatdown. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to win that fight. Hi oh guys, obviously we're here for the last face off now. TMA Sports Network for the TMA Fight Series monster show between Kazim the Dream Beg and Liam Alford. And... We bring in the big guns. We are bringing the big guns. We are brought in Mr. Mick Crossland, who's going to put these two in their first round tonight. As we go into, <laughs> as we go to the face off. Welcome, Mick. It's great to have you involved on the show. How you doing, buddy? I'm buzzing to be. I cannot wait for this fight. Oh, mate, it's uh, it's it's going to be one to be. Wait, well, it's, it's been spoke about a lot, hasn't it? And I think it's a good show to bring back full contact after the lockdown. Absolutely essential, mate. It's a fight everyone wants to see and credit to you for pulling it together in such difficult times. Like, the whole world's excited for this one, so we can't wait. Oh, mate, it's uh, it's good. But, should we bring the fighters in? Yeah, let's bring, bring them in. in. So, okay. First of all, Kazim, Liam, welcome. Welcome. Yes, guys. How you doing, lad? Yes, mate. You all right? Yeah, boys. The last face off, boys. And I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy and I'm going to pass you over to the man at the moment, Mr. Mick Crossland. Let's do this. How are we doing, boys? You all right? Good, yes, Mick. How are you? All good. Mick, I am absolutely buzzing. We've got fights happening this weekend. Some of my guys are out. Nice little appetizer for the big night then coming up. Um, obviously a very historical night for kickboxing uh, one of the rare times that organisations have been able to work together and put all the major titles on the line certainly all the titles that matter once you guys fight each other I think everyone's in agreement that that is going to be the deciding fight for the undisputed uh, full contact number one at your guys weight and probably pound for pound when you look at both guys resumes um, what I wanted to do just to kick off I know a lot of people in the UK, we know a lot about Kazim on the kickboxing scene, but I know this is getting more interest worldwide. And I think a lot of people like to get to know a little bit more about Liam. So I'd just like to start with Liam and just wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've done in the sport. Uh, yeah, so myself, this is my, in TMA, this is only my second professional fight. So uh, my first professional fight, we took the WK world title, went 1-0. And this time we're going to take them all and go 2-0. So um, in amateurs, I was fighting, when we started off, we were fighting every weekend, like I'd say Quaz was and most people do. And uh, I have multiple world titles in amateurs. So it was kind of the natural next step to go into the professional scene. So you're like the Lomachenko of kickboxing then. You absolutely dominated the amateur scene, built up your experience and then just went straight in at top level as a pro. Yeah, that's, that was the plan. Anyway, it worked out. So, I believe, were Dylan Chima your first pro fight then? That was your first one? It was, yeah. And that went the full 12 rounds? Yeah. And I watched that fight. You looked pretty comfortable. It got tough in the later rounds, but you 
held your composure really nice, looked really sharp. So watching your training videos, fitness is not going to be a big problem for you in this fight. No, no. 100%. Okay. So what about you, Kaz? Tell us who you are and why you're on this stage. Uh, well, where do I start? I'll be up about one hour if I had to lay off everything I've won. Um, yeah, same thing. Started from when I was young. Won everything that I've, I've entered. Like, you know, going from fighting every weekend, fighting on mats, fighting on the ring, fighting in car parks, fighting everywhere. Um, literally, I've won everything like, coming up. I uh, turned amateur, um, full contact when I was 16. I had um, 22 fights in the amateurs from 16 to 18, uh, winning all of them. Obviously, turned pro and then I'm still going undefeated now. Um, I fought at world level like many times. Um, and yeah, 49 and all, soon to be 50 and all. And no one, no one can say say they've they've done what I've done. So, you know, they, they, there's levels to this. I think it's worth mentioning. I think that's fair as well to say that one of the other things that makes it a really historic night is that Kaz is shooting for the 50 and 0. Uh, it's always a famous milestone by fighters. I think Rocky Marciano went 49 and 0 and retired. Very few people get past the 49 and 0 mark. It's, it's a big test on the mind and body to stay elite for that long. Uh, I think the full contact world at this point is in general agreement that Kazim is probably, I think it's fair to say, pound for pound recognised as the number one fighter. So what I want to ask you, Liam, is what, why are you going to succeed where 49 other people have failed? Because, like, like to be honest, like someone could be faster than me or fitter than me or stronger than me, but I'm not going to stop, do you know what I mean? Like, I did have to knock me out cold before I take a step back. Like, like there's a... Uh, like, to be honest, like, you know, like, if someone could be fitter than me or stronger than me, or an uh, all-around better fighter than me, but I know that I'm not going to, I'm not going to bre break my heart. I'm not going to ease off. There's nothing they could do to put a doubt in my head. It's interesting that you mentioned knock you out cold, because I think it's fair to say that Kazim is, is famous for his power. Uh, he knocks out most guys that he faces. There's a few iron chin guys like Dylan, who managed to take his best shots and still be standing at the end. Is Kazim's power a concern for you? No. Do you feel like you've ever faced anyone uh, throughout your career who can match some of Kazim's attributes? Yeah, well, like, you know, he, he's tall. I fought tall guys. He, he's, he's rangy. I fought rangy guys. But, like, at the end of the day, he's his own style. Like, no two fighters are the exact same. But I'd say, you know, like... The amount of fights that I've had throughout the years, I've definitely seen multiple, if not every style. Yeah, you've, you've had an extensive career, uh, but like you said, there's not many like Kazim. But then on the other side of that, Kaz, you've got Liam. If, if I've watched your career from the beginning, I'm a massive fan. I love what you do, how you fight. Um, but if I were going to design a fighter that would give you problems, it would be someone exactly like Liam. He's quick, he's slick, he's unorthodox. He's a smaller fighter, and I think sometimes smaller fighters can make that their advantage by being small, working the angles and positions. Does any of that phase you going into this fight? Gavin, in my whole career, and that's included, um, Mick, in, in my whole career, including light contact, full contact, mat fighting, everything, I've probably faced two people that are probably the same height as me. So everyone else has been shorter. So, you know, me fighting the shorter fighter is like, that's just normal for me. It's it's rare for me to fight someone my own height. So, you know, like you said, like Liam's got that mat fighting style. And being honest, I used to, when I used to fight on, on these mat shows, I used to just break them down real quick. I used to hit them, they used to drop. I used to hit them, they used to drop. I used to fight on the WK, K, WKAs. I used to fight on the Iskers. I used to fight on the Wackos. Most of these map fighters, they used to come with this map fighting style. I used to hit them and they used to fall. So, me fighting the shorter fighter, that, that's, that's a norm for me. In your opinion, Kaz, what would you say Liam's strengths are then? What is your biggest concern coming into this fight? What does he do well? Um, from what I've seen, from, from what I've seen from the Dylan fight, um, yeah, he's fast, got good movement, 
but you can only you, you can only have good movement if, if someone lets you move and then the thing is like it doesn't matter how much of a good mover you are from when you're getting hit hard you know there, there, there's not a lot that you, you know there's not a lot of time that you can move and be taking he- heavy punishment at the same time so now nah, nothing like I feel like I'm just a, not trying to be cocky or anything but I just feel like I'm the better fighter in every department and I feel like I've faced this style many 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 times and you know what if 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 you look back yourself look through my whole career try and find one person that's that's gave me a problem with this style that is a good point and i have watched you face all different kinds of styles one thing i find interesting about this fight is uh, Kazim and his team at Oscar, um, they've been filming every bit of his training during the daytimes and that's been going up week in week out uh, I think Kazim showing his confidence there. Do you feel like that's a mistake, Liam? Have you seen anything in his preparation that's give you a, an idea into how Kaz is approaching the fight and then what you're going to do in response to that? To be honest, like I see the videos because like I get I get notifications because they tag me when I post them. But I don't really watch them. I watch like a clip of the first one, but like someone hitting the bag or hitting pads, completely different tinder rings, you know, like or even sparring, like. It, because it's all controlled or you know what's going on like fight night is different to sparring or different to pads so I wouldn't base I wouldn't base the the way he's going to come out and fight night off watching him Facebook videos but um yeah so you've not really studied the film or took much time Kazim is that a mistake on Liam's part? Mick what, what can you study from them videos? I'm hitting hard I'm hitting fast I'm hitting sharp I'm hitting in multiples, I'm hitting with hard singles, I'm punching, I'm kicking, I'm hitting at every angle, I'm fighting with my hands down, I'm fighting in my hands up, I'm switching side for what are you gonna take from that video? And remember yeah, that yeah. what we're showing what we're showing is, is just a fraction of, of my training. People are like people, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback from it saying, Oh yeah, like you know, you're training good. You're seeing a fraction of it. People ain't really seeing the, the, the real dog work that I'm putting behind the scenes. So, yeah, like them, them videos are more like more of like a highlight. So, you know, if someone can pick something out from it, then 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 fair enough to them. But then they ain't nothing that no one's gonna pick pick from them videos. It is all well and good being able to hit pad pads, but pads don't hit back. Do you know what I mean? Pads don't hit back, but you know what? Every sparring partner I've faced, feel free to message them and ask them how they felt. Because let, I, and and I'll and I'll say this now because you know most of my sparring partners are going to be watching this. Every spa I've I've sparred, I've I've won every single spa and every 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 sparring partner I've had I've hurt them. So what does that say? I've been sparring heavier people, taller people, shorter people, stronger people. I'm fighting. I've been sparring seventy plus, uh, seventy kilo plus guys, and I've been hurting them, been benching them. So. What does that say? Pads don't hit back, but you know, like what I do on the pads and what I do in my training, I always transition it into my fights. Liam, Kaz is very, very confident. Um, you can hear the confidence in his voice and he's got every right to be. He's a proven entity in the sport. Um, who do you feel has got the most to prove in this fight? Who's got the most pressure on their shoulders? Yeah, see, uh, Kaz is all the pressure. He's going for a big 50 he's all his best on the line where I, I don't I've do no pressure, pressure. <laughs> me I do not do pressure you, you you know me personally I don't do pressure I don't I don't I don't be I don't get nervous I, I don't do pressure you know I thrive off that I thrive off my unbeaten record 49 and 0 I, I and I say this every time no one can at my way in the world can beat me as simple as that. I train like I train like I train him like this is my fiftieth fight. I'm training my fiftieth fight. I've trained in my first fight. My hunger's even even more now. And like you know, I everything. My whole life is kickboxing. I wake up kickboxing. I eat kickboxing. I sleep kickboxing. I even walk the dog kickboxing. I'm walking the dog and thinking about kickboxing. So come on, I don't I don't do pressure. You should know that, Liam. 
obviously not a lot of pro experience despite your amateur background. Impressed everyone when you've done the 12 rounds with Dylan and did a good job outboxing him as well. And you beat him before Kaz did too. Um, but you can he hear Kazim's confidence. We've seen the work that he's done. Have you made a mistake in this fight going into the lion's den and agreed to come over and fight him on his turf? No, not at all. Not at all. We did it last time. We've done it multiple times before. Going into their back garden, beat them at their own game, come home with the belt. They're going to shock the world now in three weeks. I think it's fair to say I think shock the world's a good term because I think most of the kickboxing world recognises Kazim as the favourite in this fight. Obviously, he's got more pro experience. Um, how would you compare Kazim to your other biggest win of your career, Dylan? What would you say the difference in the two is? Yeah, well, there obviously there's more eyes on the fight. It's a bigger say achievement with the belts on the line. But at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter what belts are on the line, it doesn't matter how many eyes are on the fight, when it's me and Kaz in the ring, all that matters is getting the better of them round by round, minute by minute. Do you see this being a long fight? It all depends. One punch could change any round, one punch could change the whole fight. Have you got the power to hurt Kaz? I've never even seen him rocked in a fight. Can you be the first one to hurt him in a fight? No chance. I'll answer that for you, mate. There's no way, there's no way Liam is hurting me. Use I've, I've come up with people that hit three times as hard as Liam. And you know what? First name, top of my head, Ronnie Clark. Ronnie Clark went on to win European title in professional boxing. Hit three times as hard as Liam and he couldn't hurt me. He had 10 rounds to do. You know what? He had 15 rounds to do because I fought him twice. Ronnie couldn't hurt me. So there's no way Liam's gonna hurt me. No chance. We'll see like you know, said, yeah, we will. That's that's the thing. You're not a big hitter. I'll tell you that to you. You are not a big hitter. You you cannot hurt me. I I I, I will I will put my hands down and let you punch me in my face and you still won't hurt me. Yeah, we'll see you now, that'll be a big mistake. Mickey, you your words. <laughs> 40, 49 other people have tried to make me eat my words, but you know what? I've, what's happened every single time? So, it's getting a little bit heated. Coming into the fight on the night, obviously there's going to be a lot of... There's a lot of attention around this. The energy is going to be electric. I'm going to be ringside and I cannot wait for it, to be honest. What's going to be going through your mind, Kaz? Because we're talking your 50th fight, 50 and 0, making history in the sport unifying the titles which i know has been a lifelong dream uh the pressure's on everyone's there what are you going to be thinking at that moment when the first bell goes the same thing i think every single fight aim seek and destroy that's it and like i say i say it doesn't matter who's in the opposite corner to me i will i will walk through everyone who's in the opposite corner like the same way like you know it doesn't matter what what style they bring what they bring to the table I know what I do. I know what I'm capable of. I know I know how hard I train. I, I put everything in every single fight camp. I don't leave no stones unturned. So the the round one is the same same thing that the same mentality I'm going with every fight. AMC can destroy. So you've heard it there from Kazliam. Uh, he's coming in. He likes a knockout. He's going to be coming aggressive. Um, what are you going to do that is going to upset and offset what Kazim's going to be presenting? See, like I, was, I was watching Kazim's last fight against Chima and he was, he was picking him off with a jab and he was leading everything up. But like, Chima is obviously a world-class fighter. Credit to him, but I feel he didn't have enough movement and he was kind of like just standing there and Kaz was picking him off. But I feel that I've got the speed and movement to upset his rhythm. And then I'll capitalise on that then up. I'll, I'll get into my rhythm and push him back. So you mentioned the fight with Dylan. I watched both fights very recently as I'm uh, starting to get excited for you two matching up. In your opinion, Liam, both Dylan's like a wicked fighter, probably mm. the UK number one, I think, at the time, just before you beat him, Kaz had been inactive at that time. And I think everyone regarded him as, as the main man at the time. And you come out of nowhere, straight out the amateurs and beat him. In your opinion, who did that in better style and, and, and why? Who did it in better style? Mm. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd say 
I'd say I did because I went to distance. Obviously, we both went to distance. But say I was obviously the massive underdog. Nobody knew about me. Like came out as an exciting fight, toe to toe. And I, I, I just feel I landed more punches. Obviously, Kaz peppered him with the jab, but I think I landed more power shots. Do you think your power is going to be a factor against Kazim? Yeah, 100%. And watch I, I, I think it's really underestimate me when he's saying that I don't have power or he's had people with three times as much power. How could he possibly know? I don't, I don't, I don't underestimate him. And if I under, underestimate him, I wouldn't be training the way I do. I wouldn't be training three times a day, six days a week, every single week. I've been in camp now for what, 10 weeks later. I don't underestimate anyone. If I underestimate someone, I wouldn't be training the way I do. I wouldn't be living the lifestyle I do. Wouldn't be making the sacrifices I do, so I don't underestimate anyone. But I'm like I, like, you know, I'm, I'm experienced. I've been in the game a long time, and I'm speaking from facts. Like I'm speaking from words coming out of people that have fought you, saying about your power. So you know that's that's not me making up. That's from people that have fought you. So like I said, people, I've I've never been hurt in all all my fights. Never been hurt, and that's. Light contact, full contact, mats, ring, I've never been hurt. So so you're you're not gonna be that man to hurt me. No chance. Well, we'll see you now in three weeks. We will, we will. So it's coming up guys, um and all the talking's almost over. We're putting the finishing touches on what has been a long camp for both of you. I'll ask you individually and I wanna know like What's the outcome going to be on the night? Not just who's going to get the W, but also how's the fight going to go? How's it going to end? What are we going to see? Kaz, I'm going to ask you first. What are you going to see? Yeah, what are we are going to see on the night? How's it going to unfold on the night? It's going to, it's going to be a beatdown. That's the simplest way I can say this fight is going to be a beatdown. It's not going to be It's not going to be a, 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 a game of chess. It's not going to be a... Um, a cat and mice game. It's going to be a beatdown in every department, close quarter, long range, in in every way. This fight is going to be a beatdown. I'm gonna this fight, and like you said, it's my fiftieth fight, so I'm just going to prove to everyone why I'm fifty and up. Because the performance I'm looking to put in is like you know that's just going to cement me as being the number one. No one can even like no one can even try and question it. Like I said, when I come back, I said I want to fight all the relevant names, all the people with the titles. That, that's what I'm doing. I'm going. I'm not taking no easy touches now. Like when we got after the Dylan fight, we accepted it. We got after the Liam fight, accepted it. Because I'm, I'm gonna prove to everyone why there's levels to this. You know, like everyone talks about levels. Everyone thinks they win a world title and that's it. The world class. That's not world class. There's levels to this. I've been, I've been at this level for a long time and. Right now, I'm better than I've ever been before. Ever been. I say that, I'll probably say that every fight, but just from my training videos, you know, I've, I've never been at the level I'm at right now. I've never, I've never even, I've never even trained the way I have now. The camp I'm putting in for this fight, I've never done that in, in my 50 fights. I've never done that. So this is just, this is why, this is going to show another level to what I've already shown. Liam, is this the biggest fight of your career so far? Yeah, it would be, yeah, 100%. If you look back through your back catalogue of fights, the things that you've done in your career as an amateur and a pro, do you see, can you see anything in your career that shows you what, why you are confident you can beat Kazim? Like, what, what have you done? Who have you faced that matches the skill set that he's bringing on this fight? Just because, like, like, like he's, he, he's facing like my strategy off, say, Dylan's fight. But that was just one fight. Like I fought in like completely opposite styles to that fight if the, if my opponent had a different style. So, like if Dylan was a different fighter, you would have seen a different Liam. See, he, he hasn't he hasn't seen he has I he I have more tricks up my sleeve than just going in brawling. You know what I mean? And like it's been multiple times that I, I've had to go into someone's backyard for a world title. Because in Ireland, you know, there's, there's not much going on, so we we always have to travel, and we always we always upset them, can bring them that belt. And that's exactly what's going to happen again. 
but but you still not answering the question have you fought what? someone have, have you still have you fought someone who's bringing to you what i bring and and what and what's that just just you, you know you've, you've seen my fights you've seen what i bring so have you have you fought someone who so Kaz, Kaz mentioned that his fights with Ronnie Clark and one of the toughest ones of his career Ronnie was a big hitter when you look back yeah. through your career who is it who's prepared you for this moment which of your opponents can you say yeah I've dealt with that kind of power I've dealt with that those experienced fighters who can you compare Kaz to in what you've already achieved like all of them like there's no not, not one opponent was say cuisine style you know but like each opponent has their own attributes and like I like four range of fighters the four power fighters the four kickers the four boxers and I and I and I came out on top every time so like no matter what Kaz says his attributes are going to be I no doubt that I've that I've came across it before what do you in your opinion there's plenty of footage on Kaz throughout his whole career he's always been open what are his weaknesses his weaknesses He he throws a lot of the same combinations, like repetitively. So like I I feel I'm able to capitalize on it and time him. So you are a fighter that's known for your timing as well. So you think that's going to be one of your strengths coming into this fight? Yeah. Does Liam's speed and timing concern you at, at all, Kaz? No, of course not. Like I said, like I said, me, speed and timing can only come into it if if I let him do that. So, speed like like I said like you know that that style that Liam brings it's like it's like you can say it's a generic uh map fighting kind of style like a bit a bit like a light contact kind of style so like I said people are like I you know I used to deal with them every weekend sometimes twice a weekend sometimes three times a weekend so that style like I've seen it a million times they they you, you know I just like, put, you don't know my style you you, you don't know course, uh, I used to you face you. Your, I used to face your style every single weekend on all these opens, and I used to just break them down. People you used to come with that style, and I used to break them down. I did. You, you, you cannot. You have. You cannot change a lot from what you already do. You cannot do, and if you do change it, it's going to be your biggest mistake. So that's it. Like I said, uh, you know, most people say, "Oh, they're going to come and brawl with me. They're going to come and stand." You come, stand in front of me and brawl with me. You're going to get knocked out. Seriously, you are gonna get knocked out. Are you a bigger hitter than me? Yeah, I, you're I, a bigger I, I hitter than me. I'm a bigger hitter than you. Yeah. You, you stand in front of me. You will get knocked out. It's a, it's it's as simple as that. That's not even. I'm not. I'm not even just saying it because I'm a confident fighter. Look back. People stand in front of me. They get knocked out. And then what you're gonna do? You're gonna move until uh, until I, I chase you and catch you. So. <laughs> Liam, is Kazim underestimating you a little bit? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I've just said it's not underestimating. It's not underestimating. But it is it, though. It's it my is. confidence. It's it's a, it's a confidence. That's what it is. It's it's not. I'm not underestimating him. I'm, I'm I'm confident in what I can do, and I feel like it doesn't matter. This is why I say every opponent. You don't. I don't care what they bring. I feel like I can deal with it. I can adjust like this. I don't just have an A. I don't just have an A plan. I have an A plan, B plan, C plan. I, I, whatever a fighter tries to bring to that ring, I can adjust to it like this. Dylan, Dylan brought something that was different to what we expected, but within the first round we switched still. That was not the Dylan that we we was training for. We based the camp around a whole different Dylan. But you know what? When he did bring something different, we just adjusted. And, and we dealt with it. How would you compare your respective performances against Dylan? Because obviously both guys have done twelve round with him. What did you think about Liam's win over him, which he'd done before you as well, uh, compared to how you beat Dylan? Well, the, both the fights are on YouTube, so you know what people can make their own like judgments on it. But if you just watch both of them fights back to back, their fight was real close, real close, like. Me, I'm not just saying it now because I'm fighting Liam, but I've sat back and I've watched that fight, and obviously every judge is different. People judge fights different, but me sitting back and watching that fight now, I think Dylan was landing the much the, the, the better work and the cleaner work. So yeah, Li- Liam stole some of, some of the earlier rounds. It was a close fight. A lot of rounds could have gone either way, 
But at the end of the 12 rounds, none of them fighters knew who had won. But when I fought Dylan, I knew when that final bout went, I knew it was conclusive. But the, you know, their fight was like, it was back and forth and could have gone either way. Mine and Dylan's fight weren't. It was, it was one way. So, you know, if, if, you, if you watch that fight back now and judge both of them, you know, some fighters would probably give their fight, Liam and Dylan's fight to Dylan. Some some people would give it to, to Liam based on styles and what they like. But you can't do that with mine and Dylan's fight. You can watch that. It doesn't matter what judge you are. You watch that fight and you know it's, it's one way. Liam, you talked a little bit like you feel that Kaz is underestimating you a little bit. And then what he's done there is just talked about your biggest victory of your career. And he's kind of undermining it. What he's telling you is, he like, some other judges might have even gone against you on that fight. How does that make you feel when you're two weeks out of facing this man in the ring that he's disrespecting your biggest win? Yeah, but to be honest, I don't care what he says, like. As in, like, he could say, he could talk to talk, he could talk, talk a load of bollocks, whatever he wants to say. But at the end of the day, he's going to have to meet me in the middle of that ring and prove it. The way you're talking, are you planning on going toe-to-toe with Kaz? I'm going to do whatever I have to do to win that fight. If toe-to-toe works, then toe-to-toe it is. If moving around works, then moving around it is. We're going to go into round one, we're going to touch gloves, and then we're going to assess it from there. And then, no matter no matter what happens, I'm confident I'm going to come out with the win because I, I know I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. So Kaz, Liam wants this bad, a lot of passion, a lot of heart. And he's coming yeah. with a lot of confidence. He's going to upset the apple cart. You're coming in, 50th fight. You've got to get it done. You want to be 50 and 0. It's all the marbles. I think the only world title that's not on up for grabs is the WK, which Liam holds anyway. So between you, you've got all the belts. Undisputed number one pr- full contact fighter, potentially at any way, coming out of this fight. It's all on the line. How much pressure is on you in this fight? And can Liam do, do, is there a possibility you could have a bad night and Liam can do what he says he's going to do? Mate, even on a bad night, I'll still win. I'll still, like, my one thing I always say, I'll always find a way to win. No matter what, I've been through, like, I've been through the trenches. I've had fights, like, people, a lot of stuff people don't even know. I've been in fights and broke my hand in the first round and I've still fought 12 rounds to win. And I've won conclusively because, you know, once I, once I, uh, once I'm in that ring, there's no way I'm coming out of that ring with, without the win. Like, like I said, I'll find a way to win, no matter what. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do what. So I what have we've to got do. here, it's the uh, irresistible force versus the immovable object, because we've got Liam starting off saying he's got the heart and the desire, and anything that Kaz presents, he's going to find a way through. Kazim's telling us he's got the same, and he's shown us he's got the same fighting through broken hands. I've seen him be every kind of style. I know he'd rather break every bone in his body than lose that fight. So ultimately, Liam, going back to the original question, you said that your heart is going to get you through, but it sounds like Kazim is going to match that and he's got equal amount of desire. So again, it comes down to skill. So what's the difference going to be in this fight, Liam? I mean, when we talk, let's talk logistics, let's talk strengths and weaknesses. What is the difference on your side that you're going to bring that changes the outcome than every other fight that Kazim's had. Pressure, pace, and fitness. Like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set a pace from round one straight to round twelve. But you seen him a different fight. I didn't slow down for two seconds. And I just don't think Kaz can keep up with that pace. I don't think he'll be able to keep up with my pressure. That's an interesting insight into both guys' fight plan. So we've got two guys who won that- bad. Ain't ain't that the same thing? Ain't that the same thing Dylan said? Dylan said he's gonna. Dylan was questioning me going 12 rounds. So what? What was Dylan saying? Dylan was saying he's gonna set a high pace. He's gonna keep the pressure on me. He's gonna wear me down. He's gonna slow me down in the later rounds. And he he thought like you know he's gonna bring up like I believe styles make fights, and I think style wise Dylan matched up better with you, like. Dylan's timing I don't think matches Liam I think Liam's got great timing and precision so he's going to be doing things that's going to try and offset you differently to how Dylan did yeah yeah but that's what I mean but it's like 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 what Liam just said he's going to bring pressure pace and a work rate but that you know what every every single opponent tries to bring the same thing but it's alright 
it's all right trying to say you're going to bring that pressure and pace, but you can't bring that when you got pole axes coming at your face. So, you know, it's all right trying, trying to walk forward, but try, trying to walk through these two and these two down here, that, then it's a different story. And when them big heavy shots start landing, then we'll see, you know, how, how many fires are going to keep walking forward. So I, I, know, I know, like, that's the thing with Liam. If Liam comes forward, as soon as he starts running on his shots, he's, he's going to know about the power. And I promise you, he will not be able to walk forward for 12 rounds. That's do a you promise. See this, do you see this being an early night for you, Kaz? Uh, to be honest, now nah, I don't. I don't think about like you know, um, oh, when I'm gonna stop someone or how like if I think I'm gonna stop someone. I just feel like when the time's right, and and it's one thing I've always had like from from early. Like I've, I've got like a killer instinct. Soon as I saw, smell blood, that's it. I know that I've got them. Soon as I've hurt someone, you know, it's game over from there. Like there ain't many people that have hurt and haven't finished stuff. So that's the thing. I feel like, you know, as soon as, whether it's in the first round, whether it's in the 12th round, as soon as I smell blood, that's it, it's game over then. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, trying to stop. How do you stop something coming at you? Someone who can box up both hands, kick up both legs, can mix up hands and legs, hits hard, or hit, hit fast. So how do you stop that? So that's, final that's question the then, what's the deciding factor in this fight for you, Kaz? Is, is it that you've got every base covered? Is that going to be the difference? Uh, deciding factor, okay. Um, experience, no one can question that. I feel like, you know, I faced, like I said, I've faced this style many times. And then I feel like I'm, I'm, and this is not even being arrogant, this is just confident. I feel like I'm better than Liam in every department. I feel like I'm better long range. I feel like I hit harder. I got longer limbs. I feel like I'm stronger. I feel like I'm too, I'm better on the inside. Make me and you have sparred a few times. You know, like so. Every I feel like I, I, I cover every basis. I don't just rely on one thing. I work on everything. So my honest opinion is, I feel like I'm better than him in every department. I think it's. Um like Kaz said that's not arrogance that that is just confidence because he's proven so he can point to a fight he can point to times throughout his history where he's proven all the statements that he's making and I think that's the biggest question mark over you Liam despite an unbelievable amateur career still limited on the pro side so I think for a lot of people anyone for anyone to beat Kaz it's a mountain to climb but to be coming in in your second pro fight only having done 12 rounds once you have got a, an uphill battle and you will be shocking the world. Um, so what for you is, what what's going to be the deciding factor? What's going to be different about your approach? What can you show us on the night? See, like you were saying that um, that I'm taking this on my second fight, that's how confident we are. That, that Like we're confident going into the Dylan fight, first pro fight, most people would take an easy fight. We said, no bother, we're confident that, that we are world number one. And the same with this, we got offered a fight straight away, we said yes. And like he just ha he hasn't seen what I have to bring to the table, so like I think he's really underestimating me, thinking he has every base cover, thinking he's better. So yeah, I, I, he's he's going to be into he's going to be in for a rude awakening now in three weeks when he realizes he doesn't have every base covered. He's not better in every in every scenario. So we've got the stage is set. We've got young lion versus old lion. Not as old as me yet, Kaz, but uh, <laughs> been around for some time. And uh, I, for one, cannot wait for this fight. I just want to thank you boys for this time that you spent giving us a bit of insight into each of us' mindsets as we approach the fight. And uh, I'll be watching with a keen eye on the night. Good luck to both lads. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Mick. See you later, Mick. See, See you in two weeks, Liam. Sleep tight, boy. <laughs>